As we all know, solo queuing can be pretty rough, but we often have no choice but to continue that ranked grind by ourselves. Instead of looking at playing solo as a hindrance, look at it as your chance to prove just how good you are as an individual player. What's up guys, it's Valued, and today we're gonna go over the best ways to prepare for solo queue and how to pilot your team to victory. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing I wanna touch on is how you should go about ensuring that you're ready to carry solo queue games. While you can totally just spam solo ranked and get a lot of practice, I strongly recommend you regularly spend time playing pubs. Running pubs or playing solo no fills is a great way to make sure you're ready to dominate in any fight before ever hopping into ranked. Now, I know, I know, this tip might sound pretty obvious, but trust me guys, while these games aren't gonna have the same flow and pacing of your ranked matches, doing well here is the testing ground for how well you will do in a more competitive environment. If you're struggling to win gunfights due to your positioning, your aim, or even something like your weapon choice, this is where you should be playing to work out the kinks. Teammates aside, you need to make sure that you are confident in yourself before you go into ranked matches and that you're prepared for the legendary challenge known as solo queue. Personally, I like to run solo no fills when I'm working on my individual improvement or warming up for a long ranked session. Getting comfortable navigating the map, winning fights, and staying alive all on your own is crucial to be able to direct random teammates in your ranked games. I really like playing completely solo because the focus is nothing but on my play. It allows me to really focus on my decision making, and if I take fights, I do so very strategically to come out on top. We all know that normal games are nearly as competitive as ranked, and players tend to play these matches a lot differently than ranked games. But that doesn't mean there isn't a ton of practice to be had here, and the value you can get from regularly putting yourself in bad situations and coming out on top cannot be understated. One thing I really like doing is playing solo and talking through what my plans are. This might feel weird at first, but talking to yourself about what your next move is, what map position you want to get, and what fights you want to take can really prep you to always have good communication with your squad mates in a game. While we all like to think that our teammates are the problem, this isn't always the case. You're gonna come across a lot of teammates that are suited just fine to help you win games. The problem in most cases is that you're not on the same page. So you should also be practicing your communication in game even when you're playing solo. You can get in the habit of pinging enemy locations, pinging on your map where you wanna rotate next and so on. Building these habits when you have no one there to cloud your judgment, make other calls, or just plain distract you from your thought process is key. If you make a bad call or get yourself in a bad situation, well friend, there's no one to blame but yourself. And trust me, this can help you round out your game. Putting yourself under the magnifying glass like this will help you have the focus on you individually before you add in the crazy teammates variable. Taking this public game seriously and playing matches with solo queue improvement in mind will have you coming into every ranked game clear-headed and ready to pilot your squad to the win. And if you really want to become the pilot of your games, then you have got to take a coaching session over at ProGuides.com. There is no better way to lead your solo queue games to victory than to have a one-on-one -on -one session with a coach who's done it before at the highest ranks in the game. And ProGuides has that type of player ready to sit down and help you reach that target rank that you've always wanted to hit. So make sure to check it out in the description below. All right guys, so now let's move on to actually playing some solo queue. When you queue up, you have your eyes set on one thing, RP. Regardless who's on your team, what legends get picked, whether they're communicating or not, your goal, hopefully, is to rank up. This means playing the game and communicating in a way that is going to move you towards more points. While you can't control if players listen to you or not, it is your responsibility to try at least to communicate the best you can, and also perform the best you can. I'm not going to act like a ton of our teammates in solo queue aren't the best because honestly, I've ran into some pretty suspect teammates. But countless players have also solo queued to masters at this point, and you can too, if you become a leader in the game. There will be some games where you get vocal teammates who are making calls for rotations and picking fights. If they seem like they know what they're talking about, let them take the lead. 
there's no reason to argue with them or force your calls on them if their calls are just fine. So in a situation like this, keep the peace and you will keep the squad together. If you're active in comms, you guys will be pretty surprised how many people are actually willing to follow your lead and work with you in ranked, for the most part. The higher in rank you go, the more prevalent this is. But even if they aren't in comms, a lot of players will gladly follow a confident and polite player who's making rational calls. You guys hear that? I mentioned it because it's important. You need to be polite. If you're flaming in chat, sounding annoyed towards your teammates, you're gonna lose their buy-in. Every single game, you get a new squad and a new opportunity to do this. Your first impressions with your teammates mean a lot since you only have one game together, assuming things don't go well. Every time you load into a game, be positive, chat with your squad, and if nobody's on comms, keep giving quick, decisive, and positive comms to your team. This might sound cliche, but guys, I cannot stress it enough. It is so important that you at least try to communicate with your teammates because at the end of the day, they are there for the same reason that you are, to win some games and rank up. So one final note about using game chat, don't be that player that constantly complains and bases their calls off their own experience. If you get caught or die, don't get upset at your team for not being there or calling for help nonstop. Your RP keeps ticking up even if you die. So do your best to help your squad win even without you. If it makes sense for them to come nab your banner, then communicate that. But don't call them back into a squad that's camping your box and lose the whole game over your frustration. All right, guys, I know I just spent a lot of time talking about team dynamics and communication, but it's because that stuff is so important for every aspect of your game. But now let's talk about how you should really be playing these games. With RP gains in mind, you really don't need to be picking a lot of fights throughout a match. At most ELOs, you can get good gains off just a few kills with decent placement. And even at the higher ranks, a bunch of kills doesn't mean squat without placement. With this in mind, and the fact that you're in solo queue, try to only take fights if you absolutely have to, or if you have an advantage. If you're able to communicate with your team early on a map movement that you believe will help you avoid a fight you heard or a bunch of teams you saw while landing, do it. You should think of yourself as the shepherd and your two teammates as the sheep. Your job is to herd the sheep through the map, avoiding as many wolves, players, as you can. Except these sheep have guns and can shoot enemies with you. Okay, look, the metaphor is falling apart, but you get what I mean. With how uncoordinated your team is likely going to be in solo queue, running towards these fights and constantly looking for action with no real plan is going to end in disaster. Instead, try to focus on pinging locations and usher your squad towards power positions that are well located within the ring. No matter the map, early rotations into the ring are OP in solo queue and will keep your team safe from the storm, rotating squads, and other enemies holding down these very same POIs. No matter how well you move on the map, you're bound eventually to get ganked by an enemy or just have to take a fight. When you're taking fights, you need to maximize your uptime. Don't go taking a wide angle on an enemy, getting chunked, and then have to hide behind a rock for 10 seconds while you pop a Phoenix kit. Rather than charging into fights or taking these risky angles, be patient, deal as much damage as you can while staying healthy, and play around your team's pressure. No matter how good or bad your teammates are, they're gonna help you in fights, whether it's doing some damage themselves or even just distracting enemies and taking damage for you. With the last part I mentioned about taking damage, you need to be ready to capitalize on these windows when they open, and that's tough to do if you're hiding behind a rock healing. Pressure isn't always about dealing a ton of damage. Even if your teammates never pull the trigger, they're still absorbing enemy attention, time, and bullets. It might not seem like much, but oftentimes, especially in my own experience, that time is all you need to get that extra knock or to clean up a fight. And make sure you're communicating in fights even more than you were outside of them. You need to be communicating to your teammates enemy locations, if someone is low, and what you're doing in the fight. If you see a squad mate getting pushed, tell them that, or ping, and quickly move into a position with line of sight to help them. These small bits of info could help your teammate get a kill, live, or even just do a little bit of damage so that you can finish them off. We all know how often you lose a fight with the enemy barely surviving. So don't undervalue these little extra advantages because trust me, they add up. 
I know I've alluded to it a lot today, but solo queuing is all about mindset. You can't let a few bad games or bad teammates tilt you to the end of the earth. Trust me guys, eventually it's gonna happen no matter what. And understanding that there are a lot of variables at play that you have no control over is important. While you can do your best to communicate, work with your team, and dominate on an individual level, Apex always has another way that you can get booted back to the lobby. So make sure you enjoy your grind, stay excited about every new game, and trust me guys, you've got this in the bag. So guys, solo queue is nothing to be afraid of or get frustrated with. If you go into it with the tips that we talked about today and a positive mindset on making the most out of what you're given, you'll be flying through the ranks in no time. As you guys know, it's been your boy Valued and I wanna hear how your solo queue grind is going. Are you on your way to gold or maybe you're pushing into diamond or maybe you're gonna join me in Apex Pred slash Masters. Anyway guys, let me know in the comments below, drop a like if you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.